Howdy folks, welcome to this week's Ag Report. So this week we're gonna talk about uh, spring planting and kind of what that has looked like in Ellis County. Um, we're at the end of planting now um, and during the, the, uh, the shelter in place, uh, social distancing, that kind of stuff, maybe you have been uh, taking drives in the country and, and kind of seeing the different crops growing and, and uh, maybe kind of wondered about, uh, maybe they look a little different this year. Uh, so let me kind of give you a little, little snapshot of what's going on there. You may be uh, driving around and seeing some corn that is tossing out, meaning it has the little seed head coming up on the top and you'll start to see some silk coming out uh, on the ears. Uh, but then you, you look at that field and you notice that uh, maybe it's, it's not all planted or it looks a little like a checkerboard and there's uh, bare spots out there. Or you notice there's corn that's tossing, and exactly right next to it looks like corn and it's about three, four or four foot tall with no tossels. And you're, you're kind of wondering, well, what in the world's going on there? So give you a little, little bit of what kind of went on this year with planting season. Um, there was uh, roughly about 48 hours or so of good planting early, talking about February 28th, something like that. We usually, you know, are going hard and heavy, firing up about March the 1st. So there were some guys that, uh, you know, started just a day or two earlier. There was a little window, kind of getting the bugs worked out of their planters. So that's the corn that you are seeing that is tossing out and six, seven foot tall. Well, then it set into rain. We had a pretty good rain event. And then about every five days or so, we were picking up another half inch of a rain, inch and a half of rain. That continued on all through March, on into April, till about April the 10th or so. Uh, and then it kind of started drying up again where we could get back into the fields. So that's where you're going to see that shorter corn right next to it. And that's kind of give you a little explanation of kind of the, the hop and skip that you may see, because even though some of those fields around the 28th of February, uh, they were able to plant some, it was still not thoroughly dry, meaning that there were wet spots in that field in places they had to go around. But usually um, you get a little dry spell and you're able to go back and kind of sew those together, you may say, or, or, or so that those little hiccups aren't there. And you really can't tell uh, in a field planting date a week apart. Those crops are gonna kind of blend together and uh, you know not notice that. But when you're talking about 30, 45 days worth of uh, planting difference, that's very evident. So that's kind of what you're, you're seeing out there. And I want to kind of give you a, a, another idea of our planting curve, okay? Picture a chart and a, a graph across there, all right? Our planting window generally starts about March the 1st and it ends April the 15th. Every year is different. And somewhere in that window is your best opportunity for planting. So if you started planting March the 1st and you planted March the 10th and you planted March the 20th, depending on the year and how the rainfall is, that kind of stuff, um, sometimes that March 1st is best, sometimes that March 20th is, is best, but on average, somewhere in the middle there is, is, is the best. So, Unfortunately, depending on how our year is, that April 15th corn is, is not just the best case scenario. Um, we'll have to see how that, that kind of turns out, but that is also why you may drive around and see what we call fallow fields or laid by fields with nothing planted in it uh, because that window of opportunity passed by. Maybe that producer uh, doesn't have the opportunity to plant cotton, which is a uh, later crop uh, in there. Maybe they are set up just for grains, that kind of stuff. A lot of different scenarios that, that play out in why that ground may be uh, fallow. And, and a big one, very big, important key, in that planting window I was telling you about, what happened about March the 18th or so, the shutdown and the markets fell out of bed. So now you have corn that's worth about a dollar a bushel less than it was when you started planting it. 
So some of those producers were like, you know what? I can't afford to plant and produce a corn crop at $3 a bushel corn. Uh, that's, that's not feasible. And so they, they laid, that by, laid the land by for this year just for economic reasons. So anyways, uh, just kind of wanted to share with you, when you drive around the country this year, uh, it's going to be a little bit different looking. Uh, you're going to see a lot of different stages of, of crops. You might be going to even uh, notice some milo or grain sorghum or maize if, if, uh, if uh, you're of the older generation there. Um, that's uh, not planted just a whole lot around here, kind of hard on the ground. Not really a big market for it, but it is a later opportunity uh, crop that you can kind of plant in there. And some of those guys that uh, decided that economic threshold was not there for corn anymore, switched over uh, to some milo and grain sorghum, got that uh, planted in there. So you may see some of that uh, in those uh, fields that are a little spotty on the corn. They finished up that field uh, with milo and stuff. So anyways, uh, if y'all have any questions and kind of wondering, I hope this is kind of uh, giving y'all a good update of what's going on uh, around the county with, uh, with your farmers and your row crop producers. And again, if y'all have questions or anything, reach out to the Waxhatchee Sun. We appreciate y'all always tuning in. Y'all take care now.